through on top of all that. Come on over, come on, come on, come on, this. And uh, give it up for uh, Solomon. Yeah. You may not know his face or name, but he is uh, definitely the brain, uh, the, the, the eyes, the ears behind some of the biggest ones in the world, right? I know you a long time. Yeah. What makes you beautiful? Yes. <laughs> cool. Are uh, you all ready to meet the band? Yeah. Uh, cool. Everybody get on your feet. Give up for all this food. together and everything. And, um, it's all about the nerf fights. <laughs> they challenged me to a mouth wall. There was a car sitting outside my door. Um, other than how you lost. <laughs> I was cornered. It was, it was one against like the four of them. I mean, come on. But um, no, we, we, we just we spent a ton of time together. And I, you know, I think, well, I hope uh, you guys felt that, that chemistry on, on stage. So. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I can feel the authenticity, genuinely. And I think a lot of that starts with how this project begins and also the minds that have been injected into it to ensure the authenticity. I mean, you, I don't know if y'all know, but like, this, yeah, you do know, right? It's like, I'm gonna have fans too with his <laughs> All of these records, look, I've lost out. All of these records start from a genuine place, but where do they actually start? Because when you, when I'm hearing the lyrics, they sound personal, they sound real, but I mean, how are you, where are you writing them from? Um, well, we had a lot of conversations about um, keeping it authentic and as authentic as possible. So it was really important. It was interesting, it was you have to believe that they are a huge band that deserves the Coachella stage. So my thought was, you know, 
having a song like the first song you're on the radio would, I got you would feel like the very first single, like your really teeny bother single. Um, and then that song Taste would feel like their second single, like two songs that feel like the radio, the record label found them and said you're recording this. Um, and then Guard Down felt to me, in my, in my mind I was going, okay, the third album, they're now big enough to do Coachella, you have a song like Guard Down with a little bit, the band with one more guitars and live drums and things like that. And then that song, I mean, lyrically, if you read that song, you will not be lyrical about it, but it's actually about like the pitfalls of fame and longing for, for that and for the vices of fame. That's actually what the lyric is about. So it started like making it suddenly go, okay, now they have a little bit more control. And then um, Dance Before We Walk is about his leaving the band. Yes, it was an early version of the script where, where he was he, he left the band within the story, you know, and now of course he leaves the band in the five years between the time that he leaves Salen and comes back to Salen. Um, but a lot of how we asked Savin to approach this was to mirror what was going on in the relationship which was also mirroring what was going on in the evolution of the band. And he was merging those two things. And we said, well, first we said, hey, Savin, we need five hit songs, any problem? <laughs> and amazingly, Amazon, you know, kind of got on board with this idea that sight unseen, they would hire Savin to make these hit songs and it was gonna work. And we were so confident it would and were so happy to have his participation. And then we began this process of explaining sort of the the stages that the characters and the love story needed to go through and the stories, you know, in the lyrics yeah. mirror that. So, and it was kind of remarkable actually that it, that it, it drove the movement of the movie just as if it was a soundtrack itself. Are you writing songs as these guys? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the script was everything. I mean, it, it, you know, it, I think you know approaching something like this, you want to treat uh, Hayes as a real as a real person. It's it's like you know earlier in my career when you went to drive fifty artists, you would be told to write for. It's a similar thing. I just got to know everything was in the script. Like the conversations with Kathy and Michael um, were so priceless because we we spoke about who Hayes was and what they'd be going through, and the script was so well written. Um, I had all my answers sort of in that. Um, and I knew right away the first draft of the script I read, I wanted a song, I wanted to write a song called The Idea of You, which was the end title, which sort of summarized their relationship. Were there any parallels to these sessions to the One Direction session that you had early on? Um, my, my collaborator, Carl Falk, on this, who I did one years ago a lot of the early One Direction stuff with. Um, yeah, we just, it was fun, because we just got the, we hadn't written in a long time since one last time. That was the last song we wrote together. So it was great to just get back in and, and, um, and create this. Do you need to understand this character before you can get into a vocal booth and cut these records? Yeah, I think, you know, um, even with a sort of a pretty pre-production that, you know, uses something like a, like pre-records or, or dance training, uh, you, you want to understand the human essence of him and, and um, I, I think that was very very clear on the page is you know Hayes is someone who has an incredible um, emotional maturity he has a strong moral compass but um, equally you know he really doesn't want to be seen as a joke and I, I think that the beauty of, of Simon's uh, songwriting ability is he's able to chart who Hayes is through the story when we first meet him in the band and the type of music that he has to perform and then you know, all the way up as he progresses, and then obviously, as Kathy said, we don't see him leave the band, but um, uh, the music tells a story uh, in itself, which I think was really impactful and, and mirrored the work that I think I was doing independently from that. And I think Nick did such a great job because, you know, when, when I was talking to Kathy and Michael, it was clear that, like, the character Hayes, because in this situation in real life, having been close to it a few times, you know, sort of like Hayes in the movie says, like he was, he auditioned for a play and auditioned for the band. He, if he got the play, he would have got the play. But the few people in those situations 
have the integrity to want to earn it. Does that make sense? And, and it was it was so well written where Hayes had so much integrity that he wanted to earn it and earn his place, and that was a big part. I, I read when I was reading it about his character. Can we talk about the origins of this project and maybe as you can speak more to it. This begins, correct me if I'm wrong, as a story on the internet, right? That turns into an actual novel that makes its way into a movement. Am I crazy? Well, it didn't begin as a story on the internet. It was an original novel, you know, and from and then it became sort of an internet sensation. And then that was when I kind of got involved. I mean, I not kind of, I did get involved. <laughs> yeah, you're still here. Apparently, I'm still here. Um, yeah, no, that was when I read it. Um, I was actually given a book by Gabrielle Newman, and she, yes, her dad. And uh, you know, we talked about it, and I, I thought it was striking a chord um, for me about this this sort of fresh way to look at a romantic movie where the woman wasn't deciding between two men; she was deciding about like versions of happiness. And I thought that was really interesting. I, I, I didn't know if I felt like she should actually choose to self-actualize in New York or end up with Hayes. Like, I didn't know what was better. <laughs> but I eventually decided Hayes was better. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> no, but I think, you know, so it started with, like it does with most of my, my films that I produce, it's like, you know, starts with, is there something going on here that I think is going to capture hearts and minds? And I felt like it was, time for a movie about an older woman and a younger man um, where you know obstacles could be overcome by this sort of collective per pursuit of happiness which is what they do and I thought it was interesting that not only did they have the age difference but they were living in different places they had different lifestyles one was famous one wasn't and just stuff felt like it was a lot to overcome but if that could happen, then anyone at any age could have happiness. And it just seemed like a good idea during the pandemic to make a movie about <laughs> happy women. Um, I guess that's what started it. And then, then, you know, obviously the big challenge was to figure out how to create a boy band. <laughs> um, that just seemed overwhelming at the beginning. Um, you know, and so we just started to think about how would one do that? And I guess I would just say that we thought it needed to be a collaboration between a songwriter, a choreographer, and a casting department, and somehow they would all have to work together to put together this thing that could, be, could become magical, which I'm sure Zach can explain the process. Yeah, well, I mean, it all starts with Nick and his brilliant talent. Um, I mean, going back to the, to the songs, I mean, it was also, you know, you couldn't even really start until you had Nick and his voice. And, he was just so impressive um, and so multi-talented that also the songs could be written around his voice. So how does this process begin for you? Uh, we're talking about the self-tape, I think, <laughs> a long time ago, and um, picked up speed when um, uh, when they, they liked me, they invited me out to New York to, to chemistry test with um, the Kimono actress, Anne Hathaway, <laughs> which is already bizarre, you know. And that test is iconic, right? Like, they give you a, a mission, a challenge? I, I mean, so, so from what I remember, Kathy, maybe you can correct me, there, there were two scenes. One was the gallery, the other one was a breakup scene. So Annie and I were trying to make each other laugh and crying in each other's arms. Uh, then I had to bring a song to uh, play guitar and perform to her. And then to, to cap it off, uh, you know, rightly so, Annie wanted to try and, and sort of change the way um, you do establish chemistry with an actor. You know, she came up with this really great idea that Hayes would pick a song to try and um, encourage Salam to dance with him. And, you know, given the fact that not a dancer, this is probably the most terrifying uh, task of the lot. Uh, but I, I, I just knew immediately when I went into that room there was such a warmth. Um, and I loved the character already, and Annie had such an openness for her. Um, that by the time we got to that dance, it was so natural. Uh -huh. and, and it was clear there was a lot of chemistry there. And, and so, uh, 
for getting the role. And I flew to Sweden uh, to, to record, and then it was about, you know, we're putting, putting together this uh, super group, and I'm, I'm just so, um, I'm so grateful I, I had these, these four lads with me on, on, on the journey. Do you read the book? Yeah, well, so one thing I actually <laughs> One, one, one thing I, I always do when I sort of book to, to script adaptations is I, I treat the script as Bible and I do read the book for pleasure, really, uh, because I think it's important to establish my own interpretation of the character and not be pulled too, too much in by other uh, yeah, iterations. Do you remember the moment you realized that you finally knew Hades? Or did you know from the very beginning? I just, I just, I, I, I just sensed uh, a vulnerability in him that that just really appealed to me. And I, I think this sort of notion of being uh, trapped by circumstance and um, so, someone who's incredibly feeling but um, has, has grown up just being perceived by the entire world, um, you know, since they were a child. And, and I just, I, I felt like a lot of care and a lot of uh, empathy for Hades, I think, immediately. And um, I love just seeing really nourishing relationships on screen, and I think that's what um, I, I really got a sense of between Hayes and Selene. Do you see your sense getting through a different lens after reading something like this? I mean, you, you know, I think Hayes is, is wildly uh, more famous than I am, and I think he has to sort of operate in a very, very different world than, than what I do, but um, I think it's given me a, an appreciation for all of my, my friends who are musicians or, or, or pop stars, and um, uh, I, I'm just so impressed with, with how they hold themselves and what they're able to do on stage. Were you comfortable immediately recording the, the like actually oh, cutting a song? Oh god, no. Oh. I mean, I mean, you know, we we really had to sort of. I mean, Simon's so so patient with me and. Um, and, and really let me, I think, get to a place within the songs that, that felt um, like comfortable to me, uh, but also still um, worked for the songs. And, and, and you know, his, his leniency at times, but then his sort of um, uh, encouraging me to really, I mean, there, there are a few songs that I think that I sort of struggled with at first, but he really encouraged me with. Yeah, I think, you know, well, first of all, he was such a trooper as we recorded or six songs in three, was it three days? Yeah. It was insane. I mean, we would normally take, you know, three or four days per song, you know. So, I mean, he's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there was a few, but then, you know, it was finding your voice in the songs. I remember, I think it was with Idea of You and Nick Georges, once you started to felt free, um, it was, it, it was magical. So, I, I, I just think we remember uh, feeling a little detached from you guys almost when I was in the booth. And yeah. I remember when I came into the room with you guys, it was entire, it, yeah. this sort of acting side of it, which is a human connection, um, started, to, to, started to kick in. And, and that's when I think I started really doing my best work. Yeah, absolutely. I have videos of that. I'm actually looking at yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Like the, the beginning of Idea of You, when we, started to find, when we found your voice in it, and the Adler was. Um, and yes, fully long acoustic. I don't know. It's pretty great. Do you go? Do you go into the studio as Nick or as Hayes? Like that's. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a tricky thing when you're um, you're, you're finding someone's voice. I think you know naturally Hayes's tastes are different to my own, and and you know uh, trying to sort of chart that within myself. I, I think it's always like a bit of a blend between the two. I mean, I've, I've had to do pre-records before, and. Um, you always try and go into it performing it as as the character, but um, you know, I'm not method exactly. So I, I wasn't living as a pop star, you know, <laughs> before before she said But also for the situation you're in a band and you're sort of given songs, it's not in this sort of situation that's kind of what it would be. Yeah. You know? yeah. What was like who was the offset expert that was being like, this is how a boy band would navigate the situation. This is what the, camp, the, the team looks like. This is how they they travel from point A to point B. Was there a resident pop star boy band band expert? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that the role sort of became Danny Vitale's. Um, she was our choreographer by 
you know, delineation, but I think she became the August Moon spirit guide, vision keeper. Um, <laughs> would you guys agree? You know, and she, you know, worked with them constantly. And I, I was so interesting. I went to one of their first rehearsals, and I kind of didn't know what to expect. And I walked in, and they were all lying on the ground telling secrets about one another, which was like her big idea. And you had to figure out which thing was the secret, which thing was true, and which thing was false. And two, two truths. <laughs> 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 Letting loose and having fun. And I think when we start to get to know each other, like playing games on the side or whatnot, that's where that realness of the boy band came in and we stopped just dancing but started performing and just like living, not really caring. So. Is there a conversation about this boy band living on outside of this movie? <laughs> Up to them. <laughs> you can do it. We'll, we'll uh, just get out of here. As you know, they have their Eric the Record. Um, so that's the same. It's some fun music and uh, coming on skill, and obviously, like the, the soundtrack, which will be the oldest thing, album as well, having some yeah, on, like features and things like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Cool. What did you learn about yourself from making this movie? Yeah, it was, it, was, it was very challenging in a way. I, I think, um, I mean, Annie and I really, I, I think, had to rely on each other at different points. You know, um, we, we had such a wonderful shoot, such a fun shoot. 
Um, we rebonded it across the career with so many of our wonderful Atlantic crew who came to support us at South by Southwest recently, which was um, a joy. Um, but I, I think it's just really like an exercise in trust in a way, and, and having to really give yourself over to to a um, a scene partner, uh, you know, especially with Andy, but also with the guys. I mean, I had to really trust them, and they had to really trust me to kind of make each other look better. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that was probably the thing that I, I learned most about myself. Because you always, I think, as an actor, you're always trying to control the process on kind of capacity. And, um, you know, when we were working as hard as we were, you know, as, as Ray said, you know, 2 a.m. in the morning in the cold, um, you know, you can't, you can't control that. You have to uh, be instinctual and, and trust, as I said. So, um, I'd say that, yeah. Does working with Anne Hathaway make you a better actor? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, she, she's just, um, <laughs> well, she's not Anne Hathaway. She's not Anne Hathaway. She's not an Oscar. Uh, oh, look, she, she cares so deeply about the characters she plays, and, and her work ethic is, is the second to none. And, and, you know, you feel like you have to you have to match a level. You've got to show up prepared. You've um, you've got to challenge each other. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely, I felt like the bond was the biggest. Thing. Is there thing, is there something that you do that no matter the role you take on, that part of the process remains the same? Um, I I think it's always just like um, I don't know either. Maybe just a, a establishing a sense of physicality, like how how someone moves and. Um, uh, how someone speaks, you know, but we, we really kind of went back and forth with, with um, you know, Michael Showalter, our wonderful director, he, he's such an actor's director, he's basically like, you know, whatever you want to do, I trust you. Um, and, and so, you know, Kathy mentioned before, um, we had amazing collaborators in, in, in production design, costume, and, uh, hair and makeup, you know, finding his, his, his tattoos was such a joy for me. Um, Putting them on every day was a bit of a chore, but um, <laughs> but um, those are the things that kind of re remain the same, you know, from job to job, whether you're doing like a period piece or, or something like contemporary like this. Can you explain the tattoo process? I've <laughs> gone on Pinterest a lot, um, <laughs> seeing see what we clear, you know, just just kind of things that were sort of felt personal. Uh, that, that are never really like reference on screen. I think that they're just all things that very much like tether you to the character. So you know, you're coming in in the makeup trailer in the morning, and uh, you're feeling very like in character once you put them all on and everything. And so yeah, that was part of it. For you, how do you think these songs are finished? I mean, are you? Are, are is every song a full fledged record? Yeah. We want to make an album, so yeah, it will be full fledged. Pop songs. And we recorded the whole thing and uh, yeah, it all came out in the soundtrack. So, the question I ask a lot of musicians, I'll ask you, the band interested, how do you know when a song is finished? Because, or in this case, how do you know a song is ready enough to show an artist or let an artist hear it to interpret it and make it run? Only in this case, you didn't get my own choice because we kept saying this the songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but it was very much approached like you would an artist, you know. Because um, I, I started writing songs by watching like Dawson's Creek and like <laughs> writing from Dawson's <laughs> point of view after London and WWE. Um, <laughs> right, there you go. But um, so it was, you know, you kind of think it's done when there's. You feel at least at that moment there's nothing else to do. I mean, we take a few days away and listen to it some more, but then you, yeah, you, you, you just feel it. I don't know, it's, it's 20 years of doing it, and, it's, uh, and you just sort of feel it instinctually when it's done. So, how do you enter into Hayes' shoot the same way you entered into Dawson? Um, <laughs> same process, except I didn't have the script for Dawson's Creed. But, um, <laughs> Again, it goes back to the script, you know, like, like as a songwriter, when you're working with an artist or for an artist, um, 
I, I see it sort of like a service. You're trying to tell, help them tell their story. Um, and sometimes it can be a bit of my story, but you know, you, real jobs help them tell their story. And again, everything was there in the conversations with Kathy and Michael and in the script. And I, I knew, I knew, and I know that part of the case, so I've, I've been close to a few bands that have gone through that. So I, I, I've seen that. No way. <laughs> <laughs> how proud are you? How proud are you of this film? And when you watch it fully, you see this, and you see all the hard work actually be tangible, real. You can feel it. It's electric. How does that make you feel? Oh, I mean, it's amazing. It's always amazing when you know something that started as a germ of an idea, you know, turns into a full-fledged living thing. But in this particular case, I'm just so proud of all of them because they really brought the whole thing to life. I mean, I just, I was so kind of nervous that we could create this convincing worldwide phenomenon of a band and, and make it work, and they made it work, so, and, and Fab made it work, so I feel super proud. I'm always proud of it. Really <laughs> what does it feel like to watch it? And do you enjoy watching a movie that you made? Do you just focus on notes that you have for the movie and for yourself? That's a question for all of you. I just try and enjoy it, honestly. Uh, it's so fun to watch, and it's so fun to like be a part of a setting like this, where I get to see how it affects and it moves other people as well. Because of course, like, it moves me, and it's fun to, to see it come together. There are so many hands that go into it that by the time I'm watching it, it and it's just so much bigger than any than the sum of any of its parts. So that part is really cool, and it's beautiful to get to see how other people react to it. It's, it's a lovely experience to go through. Anybody else want to answer? Hello. Um, it's definitely a little strange to watch stuff on screen, but uh, I had the pleasure of taking my mom to go see it, and she's here. And uh, <laughs> my mom, and it was especially funny to. Uh, hear myself say, my mom's black, and then she'd go, <laughs> and she'd go with that, she'd go. Watch yourself, you just keep, do you just have notes? You just have? I, it's hard, I mean, I've been watching myself for a decade now, which is kind of crazy to say, but, um, it's just trying to shit to me, like, you know. uh, it's, yeah, I, I, look, the, the thing that really strikes me about this movie is that um, it means different things for different people. You know, that obviously people are very attached to the book. Um, there are a lot of people who derive a huge amount of joy out of this movie. There, there's a, 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 a large population, I think, of, of women like Anna who, who, you know, maybe at times 40 and, and are feeling like they've been relegated and they, they've lost a sense of sort of autonomy. And, and I think there is a really profound message also within the movie. And so um, I, I think that's what makes me most proud is um, you can really derive uh, so many different messages from it. And, and we just all had so much fun making. We put a lot of love into it. And so you know, you guys all being here tonight, and it, it really means a lot to us. I, I really have to extend my, my appreciation to you because um, yeah, we, we put a lot of love into it. There's been a discussion. Yeah, it's not for us. There's been a discussion about that. Feminism is a protective movie. Can you explain that to me? Oh, people, I, to you, I think there's a quote that the feminism is a protagonist of this movie. Can you explain that? Well, I, I, I think uh, the, the quote is, is female pleasure is the protagonist of this movie, I think, in a way, which, which you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if anyone has followed my career in the last few years, uh, I'm, I'm all about profane pleasure on screen. But, uh, uh, but oftentimes, I think it, it, it is due to the misogyny that I think exists within our within our industry that we don't we don't see you know female pleasure at the forefront, and I think that was something that was very important to Annie, it's very important to Kathy, it's very important to Michael, and. Um, I, I'm really, I'm just very proud of the sort of intimate work that we that we do on screen. It's amazing. It's really great. Yeah, I should be very, very proud of all of you.
I just really I, I love these characters, and I think they you know they they were all so incredibly textured on 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 page, and, and so being able to bring them to life and for them to actually have resonance with people who um, who, who need that kind of resonance um, just means the world to me. I really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this.